You're listening to Chicago Stories, a podcast from City Hall featuring the stories of everyday Chicagoans and special guests, as told to Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Mayor Rahm Emanuel, Chicago Stories, we have somebody with a connection to Chicago, intimate connection, James Carville, the Raging Cajun. How you doing, man? Well, yeah, I have, too. Uh, my wife grew up like 125th in commercial, and yeah. my daughter is marrying a good uh, north side boy, so I don't mm. know, but probably. <laughs> You're stuck in the middle, <laughs> well, man. Well, I'm stuck in the middle, yeah. Let's get talking about your feelings, which is mm. really, no, I want to talk to you about politics. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, you got Cone being sentenced. I don't know whether we're weeks or days away from the uh, Mueller report. None of us know. Right. What do you think it would take for the Republican base or conservative Republicans to begin to lose faith in Trump? Well, I mean, look, when people buy a car, mm-hmm. all right, and you don't want to come to the conclusion that you overpaid for it or you bought a bad car. So you'll justify your decision for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And people come up and say, gee, you, you, you know, you're driving that car. Did you see Consumer Reports gave it a 52? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. It, you, you know, you, you're going to defend the purchase. You're going to defend the investment in. I think the, the Democrats are going to have to let this play out. The Republicans are in a much greater state of panic right now. And the state of play changes every day against him. I mean, the body of knowledge we have right now mm-hmm. is going to be completely different than what we have on March 15th. And you think there's a sl- possibility for slow erosion? I think it's a possibility for slow erosion. I think that the, the Democrat is, is Trump worth more to Democrats alive or dead? You know, in warfare, they would much rather wound you than kill you. Because after you're out the way, they don't have to have medicine. They don't have to feed you. They don't have to take you off the battlefield or anything. Mm-hmm. A, a, a wounded soldier is the most valuable thing you can have. Maybe... It might be in a better interest to just let him stay there crippled. Mm-hmm. And every day people look at him. I, blow I, I in don't the wind, I, you mean? Huh? And just kind of blow in the wind? Just blow in the wind. I, I, as John Ehrlichman would yeah. say, just dangle in the wind. <laughs> yeah. All right, now let me ask you, since we also, little, just a little over a month from the election, mm-hmm. you and I have talked about this, but my big one takeaway was what I call the metropolitan majority, which is a big urban-suburban. Your takeaway uh, is... Democrats that really did better than lose bad in the mm-hmm. rural parts or small town America, that the real trick here is to make sure that in the small town America, 100,000 or less, that we actually don't get clobbered and we got to show that part of town. And then you got this other argument, which is, no, it's all about the base. So how do you put, you got three buckets, all right. urban, suburban, and small town. All right. So this is where I would say yes. is, you, this you, is you, This is yeah, poli you, really, you You really... Now, understand 18% of the United States elects 50% of the senators. Mm-hmm. All right. they, so you have to go in with, with, with that understand. We have to field Senate candidates in North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, Arizona, Iowa, Colorado, Maine, and I'm probably forgetting a couple. We're not going to win that with a base election. It's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But that's and also all in a presidential year. In a presidential year, correct. And that, that's a Senate seat that we have to play in. By the way, the rural vote for the 100,000 and less, mm-hmm. we're not going to carry it. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows it. But the difference between getting beat 80-20 and 70-30 is all the difference in the world. All the difference in the world. If we would have done just 10 or 15% better in these rural areas in, in, in Florida— mm-hmm. In North Carolina, I hope we get it back, even in Texas. And we've got to cut into that boat. We just cannot sit there and get slaughtered. And by the way, the, the percentage of whites over 65 was actually up from 2014 and voted in 2018. And by, by the way, why, if, if you're a Democrat, at least in my generation from the South, the reason you became a Democrat is because, well, you don't hate anybody. You, you, it's, not, it's, not, it's not people's ethnicity or race or station in life is not what causes you to make a judgment of people. But I don't hate, I'm a rural white. <laughs> okay, <laughs> why? Why? In everything that a lot of our party gives off, it's, it's the contempt. But here, you talk Senate. So let me ask this. So you walk away from this. Uh, there's more similarities between urban. I want to press this. Urban and suburban. Mm-hmm. And I agree with you. you got to show rural parts that you're not 
benign to them. You're not neglectful of them. Their kids count like every other mm -hmm. kids. But how do you create a issue base? So, so let me ask you, you're Nancy Pelosi. You're going to advise Nancy and Chuck. How do you set up 2020 both for the Senate, holding the House, and the White House? A oh, oh, very good question. The first thing is there's a crisis in rural America. There's a big crisis. There's an economic crisis. I, I, I can go and I can take you 30 sure. minutes outside of New Orleans and show you places. I can show you a full French Quarter. I'm sure you can take me 30 minutes out. Chicago's booming. You can't get around now. The stores are full. Well, People are coming. We go 30 miles out of here. And so... we First of all, tell people you have a crisis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell people you understand that. America can't, rural America is part of us. Mm -hmm. And these small towns are dying. And, and it's not just opiates, it, 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 it's everything else. So at least we tell people we know that this is going on. We know on. what the pain level is. We run is. against that idiotic tax cut. This thing has produced nothing. The November had the single, this November was the single highest in terms of dollars, budget deficit in any November in American history. They, they said the reparations were going to be $4 trillion. They were $280 billion the first quarter, $170 the second, and they're going to be $100 billion the third. It did, none of this happened. What none happened, of the money come, overseas coming home. Three things happened. Is the economy got a sugar high of maybe four-tenths of a percent of growth. Mm-hmm. Rich people got richer, and the deficit skyrocketed. Maybe what we need to do is figure this out and start running TV ads in the Springfield market, in, in the Peoria market, and in, 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 in these places. Okay. We want to start right now. Toledo, Land, and everything. Toledo, all yes, right. Shreveport, Akron, all right. over Iowa, all over everywhere. And, saying, and, and by the way, in, in places where they're going to be Senate races, what did you get? You got nothing. They got everything. But who's going to come in here and do this? empathize with them go and show up and talk about it. this is this is what i believe you don't have to be doug jones but who's one ralph northam ralph is a very mo moderate modest man he's implemented a democratic agenda doug jones was pro-choice but a bastard connor lamb was it let me get right virginia governor alabama Double, senator Al alabama senator, senator doug uh, jones it, they sherwood brown did well in the role vote mm -hmm. sure probably more liberal than you and i there's no but, doubt about that. It, but it's, it's, it, it, we believe that it's ideological. It's largely cultural. Mm -hmm. It's largely cultural. And, and you have to, you don't, and I'm not saying that you go in and be anything other than a Democrat. And I'm, and I'm certainly not saying that you can carry these areas. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is if you cut that margin from 80, 20 to 70, 30, you're going to win elections. Mm -hmm. You're going to win. And it's not like a choice. Do you see... Well, take the upper Midwest, which are, you know, right. Minnesota to Pennsylvania. We won all the right. governor races, all the Senate races that yeah. were up. Um, do you see, in a number of congressional and state houses, do you see this as a permanent realignment or a reaction? Well, for, so let, let's start. A reaction but, being a reaction uh, to Trump or a realignment? I think, that, a re I think a lot of it is a reaction to Trump. But now, we barely won in Wisconsin. And this guy had been there for, for two terms. He was going for a third term. Before we start spiking the ball, we did not do well in Ohio at all. Mm -hmm. All right. That's just, I'm not, we it, got no, the we highest. No, no sugarcoating. We, we got, didn't do well in Ohio. I will say that we shouldn't lose sight that Walker and that also the Senate race, uh, that Baldwin, which she won, man. And that's a big right. deal. The it was a big one, yeah, Right. The right. congressional. I, okay. I, a lot of it is a reaction to Trump. A lot of it is our people coming out. And I'm glad about that. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not, I know you're not dismissing it. I'm not dismissing it, but we had the highest percent of raw vote, of popular vote, since we've been keeping record since World War II, mm -hmm. which is a, a pretty big achievement. We just got to do, if we want to be a national party, and we want to govern, and we want to win the Senate, mm -hmm. we have to quit getting slaughtered. The one other thing in point rural, I make, in rural, in rural, right. the sub suburban, the suburban. I'm, I, I feel like since I know you, I can, I'm translating for everybody else. I've known you for 30 right. years, so I'm finishing out your sentences. It's kind of pathetic. We're like, okay. we're like a married couple like a married now. Like a married couple. We talk <laughs> on the phone every day, so we should. Talk to you more. Talk to my wife. The, the other thing to remember is this, and I'm not, the suburbanites are against him. They're not with us necessarily. That's, yeah, that, I, 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 we have not closed that deal at all. That we, we've closed a deal that in these burbs, in, in Orange County, California, mm -hmm. in the New Jersey burbs, we did really well. But when you look deeper at them, they're more anti-Trump than they are Democrats. Now, we, I think we can get them, but we're not gonna get them 
with free college, free, free Medicare health care, for all. everything. You know, no. but yeah, that's not a guaranteed federal job guarantee. I mean, somebody got to say, hey, wait a minute, we, we're running trillion B. But I mean, much of a surplus we're running. If we're running it when the economy's at capacity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The biggest November deficit in history, and we're probably growing, you know, 3.3%. What what is it going to be when we grow 0.3% or minus Mm 0.3%? You don't even want to look. You would know better better than me. (laughs) No, but well, what you're saying is the deficit is supposed to be coming down during this economy, not going up. Straight up. It's, it's, and it's reaching new highs even when the quote unquote is full employment. We did a thing at, at LSU Manship where I'm teaching. We partnered with the Cook Report mm-hmm. and we did a, a poll. We had it at eight, between eight and nine. We got right on. I want to go out and, and I've been stacked, tax deductible money. I want to get 100 grand and I want to do a poll of a thousand small town and rural whites. I want to know everything that we can know about the way that they think. You know, mm-hmm. what is it that concerns them? Don't what you, the don't you think we, in the end of the day, I mean, here's the thing I, I'm going to press you on. Because right. the thing is, I don't think, I'm a, I'm with you, you got to show up and you got to show, you can't show disdain, which is what our party's done for 20 some years to rural. Correct. The times we won them, we either showed up or you had somebody like Bill Clinton who came from there, there was a cultural affinity. This, but the point is, how you have a Senate strategy that runs through southern basic states. And you have a presidential year that's going to be Midwest, Southwest, and the coast. Right. And it's going to be a base plus suburb. So I don't see the alignment between the Senate discussion you're having and the presidential. And what would be the theme for the guy that coined it's the economy stupid, which is now saying it's the culture stupid. What would be the theme? What would you advise to make sure that there's not dissonance between a Senate strategy if, if and, a, if, and a White if, House if strategy? If I'm looking forward. Yeah, that's what okay, we're doing. Looking, so in the, in, in the graduate, when he said, Benji, one word. Plastic. <laughs> okay, I got one word. Don't tell anybody. Corruption. Uh, yeah. well, <laughs> okay. I'm, I mean, massive corruption on a scale we've never seen. The swamp and not is just bigger. that, the swamp it was the corruption of the tax cuts. It's the corruption of the patents. Mm-hmm. It's the corruption everywhere. And, and, but it led by the fact that all of these people all career mm-hmm. criminals and they'll probably end up in jail anyway. So I, I really think that who's not against corruption? Mm-hmm. And corruption allows you into a lot of places. And it allows you to the point that it's this a gateway guy word. You, gateway. It's a, so my, one, one word, one word. So you're telling me that your real fear is that you worry that Donald Trump may not, if he doesn't run. Yeah, I like that, I mean, <laughs> he, he won't run. Literally, yeah. we better off for it now. I'm like, <laughs> just, just keep him let me, alive. Well, Get let me him ask you a question. Respirator. You and I have always done this in politics. you got to assess your opposition strengths. What do you think Trump has going for him, not what we have has him weak? You don't have... I think, first of all, a lot of people, he, he got elected with 46. They got 45. I think that, that it was like 53, yeah. 45. There's a number we're sticking on here. Mm-hmm. Right? It, it, it hadn't, the number really hasn't changed that much. Mm-hmm. Now, to put it bluntly, 45 is not a good number in American politics. <laughs> yeah, it's not 51. <laughs> that, yeah, you, 45 is bad. You get, I mean, you get smoked at 45%. Mm-hmm. But the, the distribution of the 45 is where we get into trouble. Mm-hmm. The 45, a, a, a lot of it is, is in... Going back to your 18% represent 50, get 50% exactly. of the Senate. Exactly. You know, look, Beto carried Harris in County, Texas. Houston, carried Dallas County, first Democrat to carry Tarrant, which is Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. Actually carried it by a little bit. Bear, San Antonio, you know, obviously carried El Paso. And if you go and you look at the, the statewide results, he he didn't do. Now he tried, and I'll give him credit. I think he's an amazing politician, but he got smoked bad in the Panhandle, and in a and lot of places. Real, real real yes, even, even though we. Really but, but James, you're saying, and I agree with you though. Yeah. You got to show up. The narrative out of the election is that he did show up there. Well, but yeah, but you got to. There's a difference between northern whites and southern and southwest. Mm-hmm. They're, they're much tougher nut to crack. Uh-huh. But you know, by the way, the fact that we came within four, mm-hmm. we we could get we could get that seat, Texas against Cronin. Yes. Yeah, of course we can. Cronin, if we, if we keep people, not, if not we Cronin, Cronin, yeah. yeah, we had a hundred. Yeah, I want to say one hundred and ten million, maybe one hundred fifteen million people voting this election. That might extrapolate to one hundred and sixty million people voting in twenty twenty. I mean, these these turnout numbers are they're not impressive. They eye popping. And you know, no, and, but but the, the Democrats have—they're turning out too. I mean, the hope was that 
if they wouldn't have turned out, if they wouldn't have gotten stoked up at the end, we'd have picked up 68 seats. Do you think his strategy in the uh, working on the caravan and the border and immigration, then he got what he wanted? Well, I mean, he would tell you he got first. Right. Of all, I mean, it, it Listen, helped. I think here's my view. With a 3.7 percent unemployment economy and with a gerrymander map, we had no reason winning the most seats since Watergate. Just no reason. And it was a it was a wave election. Right. I, and I'm, again, I'm not disputing it. We had a very good election. I'm just saying distribution is tough. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we won and, and we should I mean, we should do better. He's grotesquely unpopular. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, again, he got 46 when he ran. He's down to the Republicans are down to 45. Mm -hmm. This wasn't like a huge shift in popular vote mm -hmm. and popular sentiment. We won some impressive that South Carolina won. Mm -hmm. But watch out because South Carolina won is a lot of retirees. A lot of people come from the north. That's not that's that that coastal kind of Hilton Head, Myrtle mm -hmm. Beach, Charleston, mm -hmm. uh, the Oklahoma City thing was impressive, but that's the most educated part in the urban part of Oklahoma. I'm not, I'm not discarding okay. that at all. I, I just think that if we got to change sea level a little bit and get some of these rural whites, and we have to solidify our position in the suburbs, which is right now good but not great because they, they really no, hate No, I mean, Trump. what you're saying, that, that the suburban vote is fickle. It can as easily go back as it came Could, our way. Right. And, and with, with, with the wrong signal and that, it, Actually, know, this is like, where I think tactically the party did. The fact is, you had the anti-Hillary vote that voted for Trump in the suburbs right. came, peeled off of Trump, and we had exactly the right candidates to give them a comfort level to come our way. Right. More than just anti-Trump, they were comfortable at this point with who they voted for, for uh, either Congress or governor race. You know, everybody says Hillary's campaign, Hillary's campaign says, Trump got 46 in 16. Republicans got 45 in 18. Hmm. It, you know, they just... Do you think they're stuck there? I'll see how to get better if we anything smart. But don't you think our party made one mistake coming out of 2012, which was they said, if you look at demographic trends, it's mm -hmm. our way that we acted. I made the mistake. Huh? I made the mistake. Pompous that Pompous. this was. Yeah. Yes. That right. this was that we the were, numbers were our way. We didn't have to hustle this. We didn't have to work I, this. I think I personally made that mistake. Like, you know what? We're, 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 the, we're too cool for school. We got all the hipsters. We got the young voters. We got the urban we voters. Got everything, we got everything, everything that's growing. Everything. You know what? They hurt us. Yeah, we got there, we got fat and you, sassy at a very young age. Uh, yes, yeah, because we were the cool party, the educated people with us, the, the, the all of the people you see on TV. Yeah, they're not. Thirty years ago, the shows were about kind of working class whites. Now everything is urban, sexually hipster. fluid people living in a high rise in New York, and they, and there's nothing about them. There's no there's no glorification of their culture. There's not even acknowledgement of it, mm -hmm. and. I keep coming back to my point is, they're our country men. You know, if we go through a, a poor neighbor, urban neighborhood, we go, man, that's a, you know, I wish I'd be, you know, I'd some better than that. When you go through these small towns, you go to Kentwood, Louisiana, I mean, Bunky, Louisiana. I mean, in places that I would drive through and I hadn't been in a while, and you go, wow, man, I didn't Devastated. It's devastated. Hmm. They're our brothers. They are struggling. That's what we got. That's the message he we got He did figure call. out, to his credit, they didn't think they were getting hurt, and he took advantage of that. He did, and he gave them. It was a. It was explanation was BS that the immigrants and the trade deals were no, causing no, the problems. Total. But he did, and, and to that, and, and you know what? To that he, he woke us up. Yes. I, 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 maybe we'll owe that guy. Maybe if you go back and you say something nice about Trump, he woke he, us up. He to woke. Our, he slapped to our, us good. To our woke us up. and arrogance. Right. Yes, and we were arrogant. We were. We were too cool for school. There's no doubt about that. I think people would like it to see somebody out in rural America campaigning. No, I think I, 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 think, I, think, I think hardcore Democrats, why are you talking to me? Go out and win the election. Talk to people that are not going to vote for you. I'm already for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, I'm serious. No, I actually think it's the counter schedule stuff we always used to talk about. Right. Go someplace, and it's going to make your base actually happy that you're trying to go do something like that. Remember 90, you're not going to lose something. Remember by not 92, being, we ran a, 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 a Democratic campaign. People, we had the Democrats, and people were saying, just win, man. We've been in power for 12 years. Mm -hmm. I actually think that Democrats, urban Democrats, would, would prefer to see their candidates campaigning in rural America than campaigning with them. I mean, the, the civic knowledge of the country in terms of that has gotten 
has gotten up. And, you know, this is sounds – the object of a political party is to win elections. We, well, there, there's a, no, there's a novel idea. There's a novel idea. Well, yeah. it, it, you mean it, not to go for the moral victory speech election no, night? No. It, we win the argument on climate. We win the argument on Social Security and Medicare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We win the argument on education. We win the argument on, on, on every one LG, of these issues. Every, we win. In my life, I've won 78% of the arguments I've been in and 57% of the elections. That's the wrong ratio. Mm-hmm. That's the wrong ratio. The idea is not to win the argument, but to win the election. And, and that, now that it. would be a strategic shift in mindset for Democrats. It would. It, but you know what? Because the we, other the, party the is horror, The horror of 2016. Yes, and the is, consequences and of the it. the consequences of it are like, and just when you're out talking to people and Democrats, say, all right, I got two candidates. I got candidate A you can agree with 87% of the time, and they have a 52% chance to win. I got candidate B you can agree with 77% of the time, and they have a 53% chance to win. Guess who they're going to say, mm-hmm. go yeah. with? Go, I want the one with 53. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm so traumatized mm-hmm. and, and so you know, right. with tax cuts and Kavanaugh and no, the pulling people, out people, of Paris and division and racism and no, so Clinton, the, the you know, Nazis people forget, are nice people, too. No, we, we, we got the win. People forget that, like, when Clinton came around, Democrats would give up on a lot of stuff so they could get a win. Right. Like, it, no. that, that's what they by After eight, 12 years of Reagan and Bush, right. we, wanted to, we were hungry to win more than we were hungry to be right. Yeah, correct. And that, and we should be, and because and I, that's and I agree about. with you. In twenty twenty, we're going to be more hungry, hungry to, to win than we are to be hungry. And, and to you know, if you right. have a little slack in your rope, mm-hmm. take it. Exactly, okay, take it, take now, it. Now, James, you worry now. We just got saw a compromise today that Nancy made to hold on to the speakership. You saw what happened. Boehner got chewed up by his, the former Republican speaker got chewed up by his base, and right. it became the reason he quit. And it actually, in many ways, undid also Ryan. You worry about the beginning process of that for the Democratic caucus yet, or no? I, or that a little bit. I, I mean, look, they had to keep her. I mean, I'm crazy about well, it. You know, you, but, but my line was, you didn't need I, a rookie sitting across from Mitch McConnell. Right, and it's just institutionally, you, you know better than anybody how hard. I, I mean, you just got to know the continuing right. resolutions mm-hmm. and this, that, mm-hmm. that. I mean, it, we, I don't think we could. All the things that put you to sleep on C-SPAN, you got to know the business. This so. is what I'm a, and I, I am going to talk to Congressman Bustos, who I, I, I like a lot. I like a lot. I think so. is, is we have to have a communication shop, and we have to have people on television other than the, the senior leadership of the Democratic Party, and we have to be strategic. I'm going to give you my new rule. Like, hmm. I'm, take gun control, which is a big issue, right? right? One, it can't be about gun control. It's about actually preventing criminals from getting guns. Right. Number two, anybody who's a veteran of either Iraq and Afghanistan, right. they're the only ones that are allowed to speak on it. Correct. You, and, and, you know, and, anybody and, from urban and, America who doesn't have that experience, be quiet, stand back, just nod your head. It, it, it has to be st- a it has to be a veteran or national security, somebody with that has had familiarity with the weapons who has to advocate our position. We cannot be the people to do it. And, anymore. and the caucus has got, and we have to, be, the Sunday shows and the, the, the cable networks they got to call a central place. We need, we want somebody. Else. We're not going to get who you ask for. Mm-hmm. You're going to get who we give you, and we'd be very strategic. And you know what we did in '92. We did a lot of local news. I can't. I'd sit there for like three hours a day. I remember calling to the to, you to, the, to, we did you Toledo too. And, and we ran the, those roar rooms based right. on who we had. We ran statewide gubernatorial races for the presidential. Ohio had their own operation, and we went into the Ohio media markets doing interviews for Toledo TV. You know, and, and some Dr. people Cleveland. are are really good legislators, mm-hmm. and some people are really good communicators. Let the legislators legislate and let the communicators communicate because it, it doesn't all come out the same way. And hey, we, had some, uh, we had some impressive people coming biggest, up in this class. The biggest class. thing of this election? Farm team. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. We were yeah. devastated after 16. Oh, the talent there? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, it, and, and I mean really like people with real, real, real resumes. So, is this uh, Abigail Spanberger? Whew. So let me ask you a question. I don't think I ever asked you this. Did the economy stupid just come in a flash? Yeah. Just like, well, well, you, what just, I was, you just like talking well, what and you just said it. to say is we had a lot of smart people, uh-huh. all right? I mean, we had a tool and we had, you know, we had all these people. And I'm like, don't be too smart. Okay? <laughs> just let everybody get out. Thinking, let's drop, you're out thinking yourself. You know, my, my point is 
Like, I like to cook, and every recipe for pancakes says the first thing, don't overbeat the batter, okay? <laughs> and, yeah, I've been around, and everybody wants to get in a discussion over it. Just, but my, my thing was, the economy stupid is like, it's really smart to be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> when I ran my mayoral race, you and I got in a period of time when it was TV, radio, and mail. Poof. And now you got so, okay. Do you think you could win a race today? Well, look, from the given all the, the tech now. the first person in Athens in the first election said this election is a choice. The first election. The first election, Athens. 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 This guy. You mean Athens, Greece, not Athens, Athens Ohio. Greece. Not Athens, Ohio. <laughs> not Athens, Georgia. I just have to. Uh, I, have to I have to go to translation for you. Athens, okay? Georgia. Athens, Texas. <laughs> it's actually in Athens, Louisiana. It's in Cleveland Parish. <laughs> but the first guy that stood up said, "This is a choice." I, I think that Athens needs to Talk invest about in its future. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's its future. If we need to build buildings and, and make our mark on civilization. And somebody said, no, we need lower taxes or we need to deregulate the port. Right? So then you had changes that came in. It, the printing press. Mm -hmm. right? Then after the printing press, people talk about, you know what the biggest change in U.S. communication was? The Do you telegraph. remember the day? No. What? Radio, you know, it still is. People underestimate its power. But but if you are what, living in, you know, Corn Belt, Illinois, the day after you had a radio, as opposed to the day before, your life changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got everything. The day when you got a television, it was better, but it wasn't a quantum thing. When you got a computer, it, so, so, but my point is, is that methods of communication change constantly, mm -hmm. but the value of simple messaging never changes. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't anyway know how to do it, but I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd find me seven people out of Champaign, Urbana, or Carnegie Mellon, or wherever right. the hell they come from, and I'd get them to do it. I, don't, I can't figure that crap out, but there are a lot of people that can't. But what I'm going to figure out is what you're going to put on that. When you do social media, you do all this stuff is, do mm -hmm. we still got to communicate something? I can't figure that stuff out. I can't, you know, I... Many times, now my cell phone. Did, I don't know what happens. I just start to call people. My cell phone just starts calling people. I don't know what the hell I'm doing with the damn <laughs> That's thing. called a butt call, James. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> but no. But that's not the. That's not the thing. You, but you still have to put out mm -hmm. relevant story. information and stories. Why do you think uh, the base? Uh, when you look at our party, why do you think we're, the ones that have succeeded, in my view, when you look at President Clinton, you look at uh, President Obama. They were good at stories. Right. They were good at their personal story conveying where they wanted to go in their story and be part of that. What did they have? That I, I'll tell you what they have. And I'm going to tell you, this podcast audience, I'm getting ready to give you a piece of information <laughs> oh, that will is, change your life. This is the most <laughs> profound For all thing. you people I know, James, this is all going to be really stupid right now. Okay. It's going to be it, fundamentally basic. Right. What, so the, what is this? Don't right, give me the, the, the don't give a, me, I know you're BS. There's a way that human beings, only one way that human beings hear stories. Right? You have. I can tell you, you take your favorite movie, your favorite book, your favorite play, your favorite anything, and I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Let's take The Godfather, because we like that. We, lo we both we love, we love, love The Godfather. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. You like one, you two, or three. Which one first? Uh, one, two, then three, like mm -hmm. everybody else. Two, but, one, but and three. Two, two one, three. Yep. All right. the, the, every story begins with a setup. So you meet people, you make a judgment. You meet the Don, you meet Sonny, you meet Turk and everything. Mm -hmm. Then the Turk shoots the Godfather. The rest of the movie, so that's the setup, right. the conflict, mm -hmm. and at the end, Michael kills everybody. That's the resolution. You re I read Greatest part of the movie. Great, so I read Winnie the Pooh. You, you, you read? Wait, wait, saying Godfather, Winnie the Pooh? Well, I'm just saying, making okay. a comparison. The, the story, the arc of the story is the same. You meet. Winnie and you meet Pigger and you meet Tiglet and you meet the whole thing in a hundred acre wood. Then Winnie can't find the honey. And then at the end, Charles, whatever, the, the human kind of character comes in and finds the honey. You don't get, there's no other way to tell a story mm -hmm. than set up conflict resolution. So what, what, what President Clinton do, President Obama do is, we had a great country, but everybody didn't participate in this in country. In the greatness. In the greatness of it. And America can never achieve its true promise and its true destiny until 
everybody participates. So the setup is great country, but the country is kind of stuck in a place because we're not participating equal. And if you elect me, I'll change. Reagan, great communicator. American, great country. We won the war. Government got in the way. And the thing that's making America not great is government. And if you elect me, government's a problem. I'm going to get government out of the way, and you will flourish. Good story. Who do you think is the best politician uh, that you, best politician in America in the last 60 years? Rank them. Politician. We're not politician. Talking about, we're not talking about successful presidents. We're saying best politician, raw Clinton, campaign. Clinton, Reagan, one, one, eight, take which is either one you want. I would say there were better politicians than President Obama because President Obama really doesn't like politics that much. He's one of the few people, most politicians actually like politics, mm-hmm. right? Uh, like, Where would you put Kennedy? I mean, he was gutsy. He saw opportunities. He was able to frame something. He could certainly to summon a new generation of Americans. He had, he had, he had a, a, a pretty, he had the story. High, part, yeah, damn right he right. does. I mean, I mean Johnson. Got, yeah, he, 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 he was insider. a good kind of leader, right. but he was a he was an insider guy, and he, he, he's effective. But he he wasn't. Where a do great, you rank? But, where do you rank Truman's forty eight? Uh, the do nothing Congress as kind of a political strategy. Well, Truman could just seize opportunity. Uh, he could really seize an opportunity. I, I, mean, I do think range, the, the tra- you know, when, when Dewey was trained, he made fun of the engineer or something. I mean, mm-hmm. he, if you made a mistake, Truman was just going to hit you. If you let your guard down, P have a left hook hit you upside your head, and you wouldn't know where it was coming from. Truman very good at seizing kind of people opportunity. People always say now go back and say, oh, he's a greater president. I actually thought he was, he was left for the dead on the side of the road. He came back, figured yeah. out the Congress, called him back in the Senate. He actually was a cap- more capable. And when you look at his Senate races, even when they thought he was for the dead because of Panagras and everything, came back. In fact, as a guy who was maybe raw, really better than we you give know, him David, credit for. The David McCullough book is very good on Truman, I think. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's voluminous. You know, can't read the whole thing, but it's, it's good. And it takes you through that. Uh, yeah, I mean, the more you know about Truman, the kind of— but like Eisenhower, I wouldn't say Eisenhower was a great politician. The Democrats wanted him to run. He was actually, the Clinton said, well, Eisenhower. No, in fact, there was a now. period of time where they went, wanted to go both to him and say, you'll, you'll be our nominee for both parties. It was actually it's like George win. Washington. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question. Who's probably the person you thought was the best politician but never got to the heights that they wanted to and fell short, but that you thought that's weird because they're really, really good? Uh, you're not going to like my answer. Go. George Wallace. He's got elected uh, governor uh, four times. We may he, edit he it. Came, we, may, we may edit it out, but no, I don't know. I'm actually. That's I, interesting. I, 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 look, he, first of all, he's the first he, person that figured out what was going on in the country. And he from and at the end, he he got elected as the kind of liberal. No, I, it was four terms, I think. Yeah, and he and he had a, one of the most significant kind of third party campaigns ever. I mean, he one of the highest. When you look across. Do you, when you look at the areas and you say, hey, you think we've... Look, I'll give you another one. Who? I'll give you maybe one of the most remarkable non-presidents of our lifetime. Okay. Jerry Brown. Look at that I'm, career. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I think you're... Look at that career. And actually and got by be- the way... And actually got better popular, as he got older. Guys, a popular, successful governor of essentially what was thought to be an ungovernable state. He was attorney general. I think he was Democratic Party. He would have his mayor, 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 mayor of Oakland. I mean, that, it, that's a, a you want to look back on it. I, I would and put ran, him failed, first. And failed as president for his presidential campaign. Right. But, but, but I would put Jerry Brown first. Any person that ever ran for office that you said, I wish I got into work for him or, or her, but I didn't. And why? I, I, I think the, the most impressive people I ever met in politics that weren't presidents. Mm-hmm. Jim Baker, George Mitchell. I mean, they were pressing people. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. I mean, it. if you didn't bring your A game and that deal, you... you <laughs> people, I mean, I, 100%. I, I mean, that, that's just in terms of, like... Raw politics. Raw politics. The, the other thing I was talking about politics, if you're talking about people it used to be, one time when you just have five minutes on your hand, hmm. read the Wikipedia entry for Mike Mansfield. Okay. The single thing. that may happen after May twentieth when I have a little more time on my hand. But go well, ahead. I'll give you the highlights. He was the only person to ever serve in the Army, the Navy, and the Marine Corps. He had a Ph.D. in Asian studies. He was the person that got the Civil Rights Act first. He was one of the first people who went to Johnson and told him the war was a disaster. After he left the Senate, 
Reagan made him ambassador to Japan. He was so good they wouldn't let him leave. And that was, remember, that was when right. Japan was the most important post we had. And Mike Mansfield's grave says Mike Mansfield, PFC, United States Marine Corps. He, is, he was one hmm. impressive, he's a staggeringly impressive man. Okay. All right. Now, we, we, one other thing. Democrats are gaining in the Southwest. Do you think the South is gone? Should we concentrate more on the Southwest? Well, I mean, we came and within you the, the height of the South. You, you know, we came within three points of the Georgia governor's race. Do you buy that story that Georgia's coming back then? Could be come back because of the sure. urban growth in and around sure. suburban Atlanta? Sure. Do you think Florida? If we, if we, do you think of Florida and Ohio are, are the biggest Florida's, problems? Florida is the biggest mystery yes. that there is. Uh, Florida is, and if we got a, in you know we got, I look at these North Florida results. I mean they they were just like and Nelson had always done well in North Florida. He was a bastardite. He was kind of right. a moderate Democrat, and he just got crushed. And and that was like my I'd still biggest think disappointment. My biggest election. thing in this election, Gillum. I mean you know Gillum. Andrew is an impressive man, but it, it didn't work. So I, my, my thing is we should go. You want to go do a big poll on rural. I want to go in and figure out uh, Florida and Ohio. Because if we don't figure those two, uh, they're, but, uh, the they're way, part of the bigger trend, but they're right. both snapped out of something where everybody else was going uh, uh, something. And, and I, I think don't the understand. problem is that we, did, we got smoked in the rural areas and bad. Well, I mean, uh, Ohio has become, look, Ohio has become more like Missouri, and that's not good. Well, you know, Nixon said in 68, the ticket to the White House runs through Ohio. If that's the case, then we got a problem. Yeah, it runs through Florida, but we still got a problem. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I mean, we still got a problem. But right, I gotta, we got this. Chicago. Are you ready for the rapid round about Chicago? We're going to see right. whether you've listened to Mary over the years. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Are you Cubs or Sox? Mary is Sox. I'm, I'm neutral. Yeah, I'm neutral. She was, that, just she like, was that disco. I, I can say this for you. You just like a good baseball game. I do. I love a good baseball game. <laughs> okay. But Mary, Mary was at the disco demolition night. <laughs> <laughs> that's how, that's that's how hardcore that she is. I mean, she's right. a real South Sider. Thick or thin pizza? You ain't gonna like this. I don't care. Thin. Go ahead. Uh, you're right. You're, where's Mary? Does she, you have no? She's she, oh, Chicago. All the oh, way. Oh, oh, okay. oh, no, it's not even close. Okay. Uh, Chicago Lake or Chicago River? Lake. Okay. This Hancock Some, Somebody said, told me, well, Chicago wouldn't be Chicago without the lake. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> so I guess, I guess Los Angeles would be Los Angeles without the ocean. Yeah, but it has the lake. It's, the Chicago lakefront, probably the most, in, literally most impressive space in urban America. 100% right, with you, brother. Yes. I mean, it's a really, really, and a is, really impressive. Every, you know, there's a little story when we had the NATO conference here, the biggest one ever. Mm -hmm. Obama here. We had all the planes routed. Who was the mayor when that happened? I don't know. That, short, yeah. short Jewish kid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we can say that because he I'll tell you what else. He says, give me the Jewish kid up here. But one of my favorite di Chicago dishes at Durankum, that, that Italian beef is delicious. Yeah, Al's, you know, Al's, it, Al's Italian. Yeah, yeah, I make the driver come in. And get, it's not on the way in. Let's go. I don't care. Go there. We'll just go out the way and get the thing. You know? All right. The Sears building or the Hancock? You gotta, I like. I'm partial to the Hancock because okay. I like to go to the top, and you can, and on a clear day you can see Michigan. Or right. and I don't know. I'm kind of partial to okay. the Hancock. Sixteen inch softball versus twelve inch softball. Sixteen inch. See if you Mary will tell you. You, you got to go talk to Mary All a little right. more. Chicago's famous for its sixteen inch softball versus a twelve inch. So that's, it was. No, a, I'm not, it's I'm okay. Not, you, I've never. I, yeah. yeah just don't worry about it. All right. The secret, James. There was a lot of questions whether we're going to have bipartisanship left in America. How did you and Mary figure out bipartisanship? Are you still well, working I think towards you that? Know. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things that politics try. <laughs> There's some things that just go are more important than politics. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a been married for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the thing that I'm sort of glad when somebody said that, Kellyanne and George Conway with a new James and Mary said, good. <laughs> can you want the plaque? I'll give it to you. You can have it. Chicago Stories, James Carville. There'll be a translation version that will help assist. Uh, but just while, we, while we're here, how, how, just, how is Chicago doing right now? Can you just give me a little status report? I, I, know, you don't, I know you don't know. So here's what people don't know. All right, tell start, me, tell start, me something I don't know about here, Chicago. Since 92, James... You know, Paul was here yesterday, Bagala. Oh, uh, what? He came to city council. Yeah, he was here for some speech, and he came, and we had lunch. So James, Paul, and I have talked to each other since 92 
four times, minimum, four, four times a week. And every day. Doesn't matter where, what does Mary say about us? What does Mary say? <laughs> We're like little girls just gossiping all the time on the phone. That's all we do. That's all oh, we do. Oh, women here. Yeah. Right? Actually, don't, don't flatter you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just feel like I'm watching. <laughs> we, to this day, Carvel, Bagala, me, we all four, four times a week still talk. Right. Like, like, unbelievable. James, thanks for being all here, right, man. man. All right, man. Good deal. You've been listening to Chicago Stories with Mayor Rahm Emanuel. You can subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tweet your guest ideas using hashtag ShyStories. Thanks for listening. <laughs>